I have to correct myself on a video I posted a while back, and then basically I was talking about the FM3A I used to own. I believe I stated it was the like the best manual Nikon SLR ever made, or at least the the best manual SLR ever made. I think I have to correct myself because I think I was wrong. <clears throat> I think the F3 is actually better. I actually took ownership of this uh, from my mother who passed away uh, back in May. It was uh, very unexpected, very sad. Uh, she had taken photos of uh, me and my two brothers growing up with this camera since I think my father bought it for her. Probably, I have to look up when they made these, but it was some point in the 80s because before that she had a F2 that I, I think I posted a video about it a long time ago. Uh, I had owned that camera for a while because she moved on to this and then I sold it, uh, I think a year ago. And I have this now and just kind of use it. I actually just finished a roll. I'm sure you guys hear how quick it is. I just am realizing kind of all the ergonomics of this just make more sense. It has interesting features. So obviously it's modular, you know, you can take the, the prism off. Uh, this shouldn't be new information to anyone familiar with this camera. Uh, I don't think that makes it better, but it makes it interesting. Uh, the interesting thing I never realized this had is when you're looking at the viewfinder, the little red button illuminates the basically what tell the meter, the light meter, it will tell you if you have it in aperture priority here, uh, where basically you pick the aperture right and the camera picks the shutter speed, it'll tell you the shutter speed. Uh, in this camera, it only goes up to two thousandth of a second. But if you have it in manual where you're picking your own shutter speed, it will kind of tell you plus or minus to you know, adjust your exposure to get a proper exposure. Uh, it's a little LCD in the display, which is kind of interesting, versus the, the FM3A, which had the old like matchstick needle that would be kind of over here on the side, you know, and you'd see kind of a, pretending what you guys are looking at in the screen is the viewfinder. There would be all the shutter speeds down the left side of the screen, and depending on your aperture, the little matchstick needle would move up and down, which is kind of cool, more, you know, old school. But uh, the I don't know. I find this one just as effective. It's kind of interesting how some of the cards. Maybe it's not as visible, uh, but it's nice. But this camera has interesting features. So one thing that I know some people kind of find silly, uh, you don't have to, and I have an old Konica SLR that does this. After you advance the film and talk the shutter, most SLRs, including the FM3A, you have to keep this out because that's sort of the lock that it's or sorry, that rather it's unlocked, and if you push it in, especially with the FM3A, you can actually kind of see where it's a physical thing that's preventing the shutter from working. I have to turn this camera on, which is another interesting feature. This camera has a physical switch right here. Turn it on. But because of this separate switch, now the shutter will work. So what this means is instead of shooting like this, when you put this thing up to your eye, and you know this is kind of digging into your eye here. Uh, turn up the light here maybe a little bit. So instead of this kind of digging into your face and you know you kind of have to keep this out, this camera, you can push it back in. So after you advance, you shoot, cock it, and you can push it flat again, and then you can keep this right up, you know, put this right up to your face like this, and there's nothing in your eye. And I actually find that really cool. And, <clears throat> you know, it's just something that the, the FM3A doesn't have. So that alone is a really big deal to me. Uh, other things, just, I mean, listen to this action. Just, I don't know, the mechanism, the shutter mechanism seems nicer. The difference is no batteries in this camera. You really have one way to shoot it. If you have no batteries, and I'll just kind of simulate this. If I turn it off, if you move this little lever down here, move it out it will still fire. So you have one shutter speed without batteries. That's that's a limitation to this in comparison to the FM3A. I gotta turn it back on. 
Uh, that one will fire at all shutter speeds without a battery because it has that really f crazy uh, shutter mechanism, which has a manual kind of setting for every single shutter speed. But then when you have an aperture priority, it can pick any of them as well. You could read about it. There's a whole thing that one made the FM3A special. But uh, I don't know. That That's just really cool. You know, batteries is an issue for me. So uh, this is, not, you know, if I run out of batteries, I just get a new set. And they last forever anyway. Uh, something else I like about this, <clears throat> you know, this grip. You know, ergonomically, this is a much better grip. You can, you got a good grip on here. Uh, I know it's just a little lit, but just like my... My digital, like my uh, X-T1 Fujifilm, you know, even having just anything, it's a much, much better grip than the FM3A where you're kind of just pinching something sim more similar to this on both sides. Uh, I don't know, I just feel a lot more confident with this. This viewfinder is really big. I can't argue, you know, say if it's necessarily bigger than the one in my uh, old FM3A, which I sold. But, you know, I don't have that to compare it anymore, but this is a nice viewfinder. This has that feature, which isn't a big deal to me, uh, but the FM3A does not have the ability to do this, the blind, the little shutter blind. Uh, I would say, in a way, this exposure comp is very similar to the FM3A, but I kind of feel like this one's easier to use. I kind of felt like I was always using two hands on the FM3A, whereas this... You know, sorry, two hands just to do this. Like I was literally holding one and then turning it or something. I have to think about it. I don't, again, I don't have the camera anymore. But with this one, you know, the F F3, you press it with your thumb and then you can turn. I don't know if you guys can see that here. You press it and it's not super easy, but it seems like I can press it and then turn it with just one hand. Again, you know, it's not nearly as quick as, say, my F100 where you hold down a button and roll the rear command dial as quickly, but uh, it's not bad. Uh, I would say the ISO is just as easy on the F3. The difference is this doesn't have a DX coating. That's not really a big deal. You know, it's, it's convenient, but not necessary. So uh, kind of taking those new things into consideration, this thing's been banged up. You know, my mom really used this. She took tons of photos of us growing up. You see all the some nice brassing going on here. I kind of feel like this thing is more of a tank than the FF. The FM3A was really nice, but the top of the the prism area was plastic. This might be plastic too, but you can see it's pretty dinged up and scratchy. You know what? It's not. You can see it must be a thin brass. There's some brassing right there. So th this is definitely more durable. And the reason I was saying that is because it's all beaten up. She. She really used it like a workhorse, and you know, look at all the brassing on this. I actually bought a, just bought an eBay uh, F100 cover. It fits on here. I tested it out for my F1, one of my F100s, because this is all trashed, and I'm gonna keep this because this is the original one. But with glasses that I wear, it'll scratch up my lenses, so I want one with rubber. And here, look at this. Look at the, look at the beat up. It's just this thing's a tank, man. She beat it used it hard, took tons of photos, and it still works fine. She has this uh, F1.2 50 millimeter lens. I just put a new uh, filter on it, pretty cheap. Uh, B, well, it's B plus W, but a cheap one on Amazon. I got the one that was on here was some cheap, cheapo ProMaster, which I feel like is just crap. But uh, this the set really, is really nice. Threw a roll of a uh, Lomography 400 through it See how it comes back. I don't think there's gonna be any light leaks or anything, but it hasn't actually shot a roll of film probably in 15 or some years at least Well, actually no, I can tell you a number. I, I, I got her negatives. So I'm gonna go through and scan them. I need to buy a scanner and uh, there's stuff from right after so maybe 2003 ish so uh, Maybe, maybe about right, Four, 14, 15 years was probably the last time this thing had, uh, had a roll through it before. I just shot a roll last week. But yeah, it's just a really nice camera. It's heavy and well built. So uh, I don't know, I was kind of like really digging it and thinking maybe I should try to uphold, get a hold of one that's in better shape. But this one's special to me. I'm never going to sell this. Uh, 
reminds me of my mother, who, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, passed away. And this was a special camera to her. She loved this camera. She took tons of photos of us, me and my brothers, I mean, growing up. And uh, I think I'm just going to continue to uh, make pictures with it. I think that would be a good way to uh, remember her. And I don't think I'll even put other lenses on it because she she told my dad, I remember, I've always heard this story, she felt 50 millimeters, you know, and this isn't the only person who's ever said this, but it was uh, like what her eyes saw and a lot of people say. it's There's a lot of discussion about that, like what focal length is what the human eye sees. There's not really an answer to it, but uh, a lot of people feel 50 millimeter kind of approximates at least sort of what you're seeing straight on, obviously peripheral vision kind of changes that up but um, yeah it's a really nice camera and it just feels feels more right as much as I really was like kind of digging that FM3A for a while and pretty big enthusiast of it I still probably would argue it's better than like the the FM2 and FE2 that a lot of people like uh, this I think I'm gonna be in agreement with a lot of the film photographers out there I know uh, Bellamy Hunt's one of them and quite a few others who always talk about the F3. Uh, I think this now takes my place as far as the the best manual Nikon SLR ever made. It's just an awesome camera. Uh, still love my F100s. Just, just shot a couple rolls through one tonight. And, you know, for the automation and autofocus with the old AFD lenses, you know, for just normal use, it's awesome. But just using this slow and methodical it's a pretty awesome experience. So uh, I have to say that I'm uh, stand corrected, you know, no longer. The, F, the FM3A is a really cool camera, uh, but I would actually say get an F3. They're cheaper right now. You can get these, you know, in more user shape for pretty cheap, whereas the FM3A, for whatever reason, has a really high price tag these days. Like I said, I, I bought mine for just under 400 bucks a few years ago. And I sold it just, uh, I don't know, a couple months ago for uh, just under $700. So the FM3As, I think, are kind of too expensive right now. And they're probably going to just keep going up. All the cameras that I've been watching on eBay, they just keep going up. Uh, but the F3, there's so many uh, workhorse ones like this with a lot, you know, user grade that are uh, cheap. So get yourself one. Enjoy it. It's a great camera.